Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, we are discussing the Amazon original movie called The Other Zoe. So, I am winding down my fall semester at college, and I was like, you know, I've been fighting infection for like the last three weeks. It's been really intense and really tiring. And I'm going between that, the group project, my unit tests for the semester. It's been kind of a blitzkrieg. So I decided this week to kind of slow things down a bit and just chill a little more than usual. Plus my monthly arrived. I'm going, you know, I'm going to be even more gracious to myself than I normally am <laughs> this time of the month, given what has occurred before. But I thought, you know, I'll just watch this. It looks kind of funny. It's about a data analyst. We'll see what it's like. So anyway, The Other Zoe is an Amazon original. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. I think it's available in all regions. I'm not 100% positive on that. But it does have, I think, Andy McDowell. Is it Andy McDowell in it? And I do like her as an actress usually. So I thought, you know, I'll try this. So overall, I would give this movie maybe a... Uh, seven out of ten. The reason being is I do not like how the main character behaves in this film. Let me explain why. So we have a girl named Zoe who is a data analyst. She believes that love is just a confine of society and that it really is all about data and compatibility when it comes to relationships. Now, the reason that she believes this is she thinks that if she can quantify everything in her life, it will keep chaos from ensuing. And also, her parents went through a really bad divorce, apparently, and that has kind of totally freaked her out about relationships. So, you have Zoe here with her data analytical mind trying to fabricate the best ways people can meet and have relationships based on anything but romance. Then you have this fellow who plays soccer. I think his name is Zach in the show. I'm not 100% sure because I do not have my piece of paper in front of me right now. We're going to go with his name is Zach. So anyway, Zach is basically the antithesis of Zoe. He does not appear particularly intelligent. Now, that is not to say that Zach is stupid by any stretch. It's just that when you first meet him in the show, thoughtful intelligence isn't the first thing that comes to mind with Zach. He seems to be really into soccer and not really into much else. And my hair is doing weird things because... I have learned that you have to just have your zen in spite of it. But anyway, so their first encounter is Zach hits Zoe in the head with a soccer ball when he is playing out on the college lawn when he really could go play on the court with the boys. I'm not really sure why he wasn't on the court in the first place. But anyway, so he comes, makes sure she's okay. Later on, they meet at the bookstop that Zoe works in and he's kind of browsing looking for a book. He then decides to get a video game for dummies or idiots book and he decides to go with the dummies one because as Zoe points out idiots are always idiots but dummies could just be test dummies. It doesn't necessarily mean they're stupid when he's asked when she asks when she is asked by him which is the best book to choose. So anyway, he orders his book, he leaves, he forgets his credit card because he and her had a little bit of a tete-a-tete, -tete, we will say. And Zoe runs out after him and he is on a bicycle and he gets hit by a car that is backing out of the parking lot. Well, he suffers a concussion and he is under the impression that that Zoe is his girlfriend Zoe. And the doctor tells Zoe and Zach, that he should not have any unsettling news until his head is back to normal. So Zoe equates this with, well, I guess I will not tell him that we are not, I'm not the real Zoe, because the real Zoe is over in the Bahamas with her family this weekend, and I don't want that to send him into a neurological spiral. So she pretends to be his girlfriend, um, she and him go to his house for dinner. There, he, she meets another dude that she saw at a lecture who 
quoted her famous favorite philosopher, I think he was French, I'm not positive, might have been German, who said that love is a confine of society, romance doesn't really exist, it's all basically data. And she thinks, well, if I pretend to be the other Zoe, I get to go on a ski trip with this other dude who I am quite compatible with, I think, and spend the weekend with him and this guy's family and have a nice time. And then when I get back, I will tell everyone that we are not dating, but I didn't want to disrupt his neurological mind with this information before his concussion was healed. So Zoe goes to the slopes. She does terrible. I mean, snowboarding, I think, looks really cool in theory, but in actuality, I think it would be quite like depicted in the movie. So the first day she has very sore, she's very sore, she falls a lot. Um, the guy spends the day in the cabin because he cannot go skiing with the concussion. He cannot um, watch movies with the concussion, no screens. He has to just kind of rest. So he spends the day in the cabin. Zoe spends the day on the slopes with the cousin. And that night she decides, uh, she decides to go in a hot tub and the other dude is in the hot tub with her and this is why Anna just thinks hot tubs are not really the best of plans. So anyway, I'm like, it can lead to regrettable decisions that people, when they're thinking clearly the next day, probably wouldn't have done. And in Zoe's case, I'm, yeah, that was very true. So anyway, there is a hot tub scene, nothing really terrible happens in it but still it's a hot tub scene so not exactly kosher for the kitties maybe but in the scene the cousin says basically well are you exclusive because I think you and I are far more compatible than my cousin which to be honest I'm going I didn't like the cousin before but I really didn't like the cousin after I'm like you know I totally get that you might like someone you might be attracted to them but if they are dating your cousin what in the world if you cared anything about your cousin would make you try to have that person break up with your cousin when they're in the middle of having a concussion. I mean, the selfishness of this act boggles my mind. I'm like, you know, not only are you trying to basically steal their girlfriend, who isn't really their girlfriend in the first place, but you are trying to steal their girlfriend while they are down, while they have a concussion, while they have just been hit by a car the day before. I mean, what the heck is up with this? <laughs> so Anna was just like, oh, oh, I mean, I don't like Zoe, but I'm like, I really, really do not like the cousin. So anyway, the next day, Zoe finds out that the cousin actually has a girlfriend. So she is kind of um, quite perturbed because of the previous night's action in the hot tub. And when she discusses this with the cousin, he's like, well, my girlfriend and I are poly, so it really doesn't matter who I flirt with. And I wasn't planning on dating you anyway. I just thought perhaps you could be like basically hookup material. And... Zoe is not very happy with this, although I will say I'm going, I do not like the cousin, but Zoe's actions, I do kind of get why he would have thought that given how she was behaving. So it's bad communication on all parties. So anyway, the next day Zoe stays home from the slopes because she doesn't want to have to deal with a crazy cousin who was trying to hit on her when his his cousin is, I mean, really, with a concussion, you're trying to steal the girlfriend. But anyway, so she decides to stay home with the dude who has a concussion. They play games. They make pizza. I've never heard of egg pizza. I'm going, that sounds kind of weird, but maybe that would work. They have a deep, meaningful conversation on the fact that, I think his name is Zach, I'm not sure. Maybe that was the cousin's name. But anyway, the fact that he is terrified about when he graduates because he knows he is not going pro for soccer, but he also knows he hasn't got a clue what he's doing after graduation. I'm going, I hate to break it to you, but most of us have no clue what we're going to be doing in five years. I'm like, we have a general idea. I mean, no offense. I mean, when I was a kid, I always figured adults had it all figured out, that they knew, like, everything about the known universe that when you hit the age of 18 to 24 and your brain that frontal cortex had fully developed you had all the answers <laughs> then i turned 
18. And then I turn 24 and I'm going, now I'm in my 30s. And though I have a very good idea of the direction my life is going, I'm going, general direction, totally got. Bits and pieces in the future, no clue yet. But I'm like, you know, if there's one thing I've learned, it's like, you don't have to know the answers. You just have to know the next step or two. Then when you get there, the next path will reveal itself. I mean, really, it's not that big of a deal. I think that we tend to make it such a massive deal that we don't have everything figured out. I'm going, maybe the point of life is not to have it all figured out, but just to do well in the process of figuring it out. But anyway, Zach hasn't come to that real, I think his name's Zach, hasn't come to that realization yet. So he's struggling with that. At the end of the day, when they go back home, to his house with his family, the other Zoe who has been throwing fits in the Bahamas because she cannot get a hold of her boyfriend who has had a concussion in that way, therefore has not been answering her calls um, because he can't look at his phone with a concussion, is at his doorstep furious that he didn't message her. I'm going, it was only two to three days. I don't mean it weird, but somebody's phone could have fallen in the toilet. They could have lost service. Who knows? I'm like, you're in the Bahamas. Enjoy the Bahamas. Then come back and say hi when you get home. I'm, it, it wasn't like they were in a super long relationship anyway. But she's she's living until she finds out that he had a concussion, which then blows the cover for the other Zoe, who his family all hates now because they found out that she only came on the ski trip because she didn't want to disrupt his brain and also so she could maybe flirt with the cousin because she didn't know he was poly and wanted her for hookup material. I'm like, you know, there's a lot of unknowns that the other Zoe did not know. <laughs> so anyway, the other Zoe leaves the family um, situation and goes back to school where everyone is talking bad about her because her behavior was a little a little dubious I will say I'm like you know that's that's not the best way that she could have behaved not something that she probably will you know sit there and go I'm proud of that moment but still I'm going she she quits going to classes because people are making fun of her they're saying things like that she's pregnant with the cousin's kid which is totally not true and at the end of the day though there's one girl who has never liked Zoe but who comes up to her and says I want you to design a website for this party we are having. And she said, because when I was in high school, I did something that wasn't quite the same as what you did. But I said that a famous actor was going to come take me to prom because my cousin had the same name as the famous actor. And then my cousin came and everyone hated my guts. So she says, you know, you can't fix what has already happened, but we can have you be remembered for something other than what people are remembering for you for now. We can have you be remembered for creating this great website while you're here at the college. So I just have to say, I like that part of that character. I'm not really fond of that particular character, but I think she's the same actress from To All the Boys I've Loved Before and who was in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Not really my type of character in general, but I do like the, the moxie that she has in that scene. So anyway, the other Zoe makes a great website. She also has a kind of a knockdown fight with her roommate and best friend, but they work it out. She goes back to her mom's home temporarily during that time to basically talk to her and say, you know, I really think that if you and dad had had more in common, you wouldn't have broken up. So therefore, everyone needs to be compatible. And her mom's like, your dad and I did not break up because we didn't have anything in common. We broke up because we both sat there and realized that we really couldn't imagine life as individuals and that was maybe not healthy and that is where we broke up. It wasn't because, you know, he liked tomatoes and I liked potatoes. <laughs> so she's like, you know, Zoe, maybe you should just ask questions instead of coming to conclusions that could lead to things that you might not be happy about later on. I mean, her mom doesn't say that, but yeah. So she goes back to her friend. She writes her friend a poem. Her friend is like, I cannot believe you wrote me a poem. And her friend has read off with, um, what's his name? Diego from Chile. Anyway, I'm going, that was a weird scene. But anyway, she meets this guy who brings curry 
advice to her hap to her the babysitting house that she's at and she she really likes this guy from Chile who's going to become a cardiologist and she orders more rice because she thinks that way she can see him again and they have a passionate evening when she's supposed to be babysitting. I'm like, this is why you really need to check your babysitters and make sure that they're not going to be bringing over guys they just met who deliver curry rice to the house where your children are sleeping. I'm like, you know, goals, life goals. But anyway, <laughs> it's almost enough to make me never leave my kids with a babysitter. I'm like, what if I come home and the curry rice man is there? <laughs> anyway, I think I'll just have a nanny. Yeah, I'm like someone that I know if they have a curried rice man over, I know the curried rice man, so I don't have to worry about it. But anyway, so Zoe's, the other Zoe's friend has a boyfriend from Chile. Zoe is busy with her website. And the night of the party, Zoe does not go. She's just watching it on the website. And her friend basically comes back and says, you know, I know you think everything has to be compatible. I know you think that you and this dude who you had this concussion incident with are totally incompatible, but you told me that you liked him. And think of you and I as friends. We're totally opposite of each other, and yet we still make it work as friends. So maybe you should go and talk to the dude because he's no longer dating the other Zoe, and the other Zoe went to the party with some other dude. So go talk to him. So Zoe gets up. She tries to find him. Um, she then goes and talks to the dude. She says, you know, we're not very compatible, but I do like you. And maybe liking people is enough. And they have a passionate moment. And that is the end of The Other Zoe. So I did like parts of this movie, mainly because I think that we live in an age where people think that everything has to be perfect when it comes to relationships. It's like the pieces all have to fit together wonderfully. I think that's one reason why with, with the... With the dating app situation, it's like everyone thinks that the next swipe will be the right one. And it's like, maybe it's not about the next swipe. Maybe it's not even about having everything perfectly in common. Maybe it's about liking people for who they are as a person and realizing that they might like things that are totally different from what you like. And that doesn't make it bad or good or make you bad or good in your taste. It just means you're individuals. You have different hobbies and interests. Maybe you in time will like some of their interests and they in time will like some of your interests. And maybe you never will. And you will be like Paul Newman, who when asked about his wife said, when asked if she had anything in common with her, said, not a darn thing. I'm actually using the G-rated version. But anyway, you know, maybe it's really about liking and caring well for people. And I did like that aspect of the other Zoe. Now, again, I didn't like the portrayal of being deceitful to people. That's a big one for me. I'm like, you don't deceive people. I know that you might not be able to tell the whole truth to someone who has a concussion, but you could certainly tell their parents and you could certainly tell their sister and you certainly should not be flirting with their cousin in a hot tub. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm just saying there were some problems with this one in honest opinion. I'm like, this is not honest. This is not very good behavior that you want to be remembered for. But I did like the idea that in an age when we use data so much. And actually, the dating websites choose algorithms, even they don't understand. I was just watching a Adam ruins everything on dating apps. I'm like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I'm like, I did like in an age when we are using data and algorithms, how really this show brought home that maybe it's about liking people. Now, I will say, as a realist, I find it very hard to believe that the other Zoe and the concussion dude could have a long-lasting relationship, not because of the other dude, but because Zoe would be, other Zoe would be a little bit of a high-maintenance person, and that would be hard for someone like a concussion dude to have to deal with long-term. But again, I'm going to suspend my disbelief and give this a 7 out of 10. Check it at the round table. Bye!